In this activity, we'll be going through two experiments. The first one to demonstrate the blind spot, and the second one is to measure the size of the blind spot. Now first of all, you will be provided with links to these two blind spot cards. So the first one should have a dot and a cross on it, and the second one should have a cross and then a rat sitting in a field of lines. Now to use these blind spot cards, first of all remember that you have to look at them with only one eye. So you can't look at them with both, otherwise the image is going to fall on some part of the retina that isn't the blind spot. So cover up one eye. Next, on the first card, you can either use the spot or the cross as the pattern which is going to fall on your blind spot. The marking that you want to fall on the blind spot has to be lateral to the marking that you're looking at. So in this example here, if we wanted the cross to land on our blind spot, we would use our left eye and look at the spot. The cross is then lateral to the spot and will hit our nasal retina. And somewhere in the nasal retina is where the blind spot is located. So that cross in that arrangement should fall on the blind spot. Now the blind spot itself is very slightly above the level of the fovea. So if you wanted to, you could slightly rotate the plus sign so it's slightly lower. Now with your right eye closed, make sure you maintain focus on the spot and then move the card closer to you or further away from you and try to find the spot where the cross disappears. Now it should be really obvious and the cross will disappear completely. So you'll definitely know when it happens. And at that point, the cross is now falling on your blind spot. Now the other card is actually really interesting. In this card, you focus on the cross and try to get the rat to fall on your blind spot. Now in addition to an object falling on your blind spot and disappearing, the question is, well what happens to patterns that are larger than the blind spot that travel through a normal part of the retina, then through the blind spot, and then back out onto normal parts of your retina? Is there just a big blank spot in the middle of that pattern? And so this card lets you see what happens to those patterns. Now because I'm evil, I'm going to let you have a look at that card and answer that question. What happens to the lines when the rat falls on your blind spot? Now the next activity is measuring the size of the blind spot. So somewhere on the back of your retina is the optic nerve as it exits the eye. That optic nerve, or optic disc as it's called within the retina, is a certain size and this activity will let us measure the size of that optic disc. When we're in class performing this activity, we set up a chair one meter from the wall. Now we've got these special brass rods which are attached to the chair and have an eyepiece attached to them, but they do nothing other than simply indicate the point of the apparatus which is one meter from the wall. So when you're looking through this eyepiece, it's not as though it's doing anything in particular other than simply indicating distance, which you can probably do in some other way at home, which we'll show you a little bit later on in this video. So once you've got your chair and your eyepiece set up so that it's one meter from the wall, when you look through that eyepiece, what we'll do is we'll put a mark in the center of that visual field and get you to focus just on that with one eye. And so we'll probe in from the edges with a stick with a black tip on the end. And then when that black tip falls into your blind spot, it will disappear completely, just like the spots did in those blind spot cards when they fell onto your blind spot. And by doing that, we can map out the part of your visual field which happens to fall onto your blind spot when you're focused on that particular point. And so you can see here that we've now mapped all the way around the blind spot. And so this is the portion of the visual field which falls into the blind spot. And so now we can measure this map that we've drawn and come up with an estimate for the size of the blind spot on the retina. Now the shape of the blind spot area that we got was oval and a convenient way of describing the diameter of an oval is to use what's called a ferre diameter. And a ferre diameter is just an average of the longest diameter and the shortest diameter of that oval. Lastly, your notes also ask you to measure the distance between the center of the blind spot and the point that you were fixating on. And the value we got for that was 17.4 centimeters. Now that we've measured the distances on the wall of the map that we've created of our blind spot and our focal point, we can then use the formula given in your notes in order to calculate the diameter of the optic disc on the retina and also to calculate the distance between the fovea and the optic disc on the retina. Now in experiment 10, we'll be using a different method for calculating those same distances. So calculate these here and then we'll compare those to using that alternate method down in experiment 10. Now lastly, let's just have a quick look at ways that you can carry out this experiment at home using equipment that you've probably got around the house. 
Now, as you can probably see, the probes aren't anything special. So here we're just using a meter ruler and we're putting a post-it note on the end. If you wanted to, a piece of masking tape would probably stick even better. And then you can just mark a black circle using a texter on either the post-it note or the masking tape. Now the next step is to find some way of holding your eye a certain distance from the wall. We use one meter and so if you arrange a chair or some other piece of furniture one meter from the edge of the wall that you can then line your eyes up with then you know that your eyes are now one meter from the wall. And so here I'm using a chair but feel free to use something that you have available to you at home. The walls that we use in the classroom are special whiteboard walls and so we used whiteboard markers in order to map out the blind spot. Now you probably don't have these to use at home so what you can do is stick up pieces of paper in order to mark the focus point as well as provide an area for mapping the blind spot. Now here I'm lining my eye up with the chair which I've placed one meter from the wall so now I know my eye is one meter from the wall. Now unfortunately for this activity you do need someone else to help probe in to try to locate your blind spot. So here I've got a helper using the probe that we made earlier. I have covered one eye and with the remaining eye I am focusing on the spot. And then we're probing in to try to find the edges of the blind spot which we'll mark with texture on our sheets of paper. Now the measurements that we perform are exactly the same as what we've already gone through so I'll leave you to do that and then to scroll down to the bottom of the page and to work through the tutorial items there.